Imagine a girl scamming about with her classmates, swinging on monkey bars and climbing on jungle dunes. She has no care in the world except maybe what her parents are baking for dessert tonight. Now imagine that same young girl locked behind bars with a bunch of cr menacing criminals surrounding her. This is the fate we would like to avoid for our precious client, Ms. Goldilocks, who is being unfairly brought up on charges of criminal mischief, criminal tampering, larceny, and burglary. These, act these charges stem from actions that were misguided at most, but certainly not criminal. Our team of attorneys, myself, Ariel, Karen, Isabel, and Steven, will assist the jury in seeing the innocence of this precious little girl. I'm certain every last one of you was a child with this distant or near. I'm also certain every last one of you has broken something whether you have the intentions to or not. Now imagine being sent to jail because you broke something, but since someone thought you intended to break it, you were just sent to jail. How fair is that? Now imagine how different your life would be if you were sent to jail for that simple mistake you made as a child. Again, how fair is that? Don't let the simple mistakes of my child Goldilocks be the reason why she's sent to jail for the charge of criminal tampering. I myself, as, as well as my legal team, are here to argue the sole evidence that exonerates my client Goldilocks from the charge of criminal tampering and, again, the other charges that I've stated before. Criminal tamp before we get started, you have to understand what criminal tampering is. Criminal tampering is the intent to break something, to break, damage, or cause harm to a person or a person's property. There are three key elements we must focus on when assessing the crime of criminal tampering. The first element is the intention she had when she went to the bear's home, the intention she had when she was inside the home, and the actions that happened while she was inside the home. So she went to go visit her friend, Baby Bear. Multiple times prior to the day of the incident, Baby Bear's invited, invited Goldilocks to his home. It just so happened that the day she decides to actually come, he's just not there. She knocks, one, not once, but she knocks twice. No one answers the door. That soul, that soul gesture should be the sole reason why you guys understand that my client is, is innocent of criminal tampering. She could have easily just went through an open window or could have walked through the door, but, but, but since she gestured and knocked on the door, she had no intent of causing any harm. Secondly, she goes into the home. She asks, is anyone there? Again, that gesture alone should, should show that my client is innocent of the, of the crime of t criminal tampering. She could have easily just walked in, went through the door, went through the window or door, and just started causing havoc throughout the house. But again, my, since my client is innocent of criminal tampering, this, this is important to the facts of the case. So she goes into the house and she plays, She sees immediately sees Baby Bear's toys. She starts to play with the toys and wonders, oh, my toys are kind of better than Baby Bear's. Just because she feels as if her toys are better does not mean that she's, she's guilty of criminal tampering. According to the witness report, there was, no, there was no damage to the toys. She was simply playing with them. She continues on into the kitchen. In the kitchen, there, is, there was t bowls of pudding on the table. Again, after a long walk through the woods of trying to visit her friend Baby Bear and knocking on the door and looking throughout the house and playing with toys, she's a little hungry. She builds up an appetite. So she eats Baby Bear's pudding. If Baby Bear's parents were home, the, Mama Bear would have easily offered Goldilocks some pudding, but since she wasn't home, my, the prosecution is going to argue that she, she illegally ate the pudding. Now, She's nourishing her growing body, and to be charged for nourishing her body because of a long day of walking through the woods is cruel and unusual punishment. After she eats the pudding, she goes and sits in a chair after a long day. Her legs are tired, she's just trying to relax. She sits in Baby Bear's chair, and she breaks it. The, I, will, I will argue that the chair was faulty from the beginning. She, Goldilocks saved Baby Bear from a terrible fall that could have easily caused a broken arm or a broken leg. So... Baby, the, the, pro, the prosecution should be thankful that Goldilocks even sat in the chair to prevent Baby Bear from getting hurt. So after, the, after, the, after she broke the chair, she went into, into Baby Bear's bed. She wanted to take a nap. Now, if she, if she felt as if she, if she felt that there was any wrongdoing in the breaking of the chair or she intended to break the chair, she would have easily fled the scene of the crime. But again, since she's innocent of criminal tampering and had no intent of breaking anything, she just takes a nap and stays at the alleged scene of the crime. 
if she, like I said, if she wanted to leave the crime scene or if she felt she was guilty of any crime or intended to break anything or cause any harm, she would have easily fled the scene. So those three elements alone, I hope, is enough for you to understand that my client is innocent of criminal tampering. Now I just want to bring the floor over to my colleague, Stephen, who is discussing the charge of larceny. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, besides being tried on counts of criminal tampering, our client, Miss Gold E. Locks, is also being tried on counts of larceny. Now when it comes to larceny and being convicted of it, she needed to have stolen property with intent to obtain, appropriate, or deprive it from the bears. Now after hearing our client's testimony, I'll be going over the three items that she used while in their residence, and I'll discuss whether she obtained, deprived, or appropriated this property. Now from her testimony, these items include the pudding, the chair, and the bed as all three of them qualify as personal property. So first, I'll discuss the pudding. Now when it comes to having any items obtained or stolen from the residence, Miss Goldilocks did in fact eat pudding, a teddy bear sized bowl of pudding, when she entered the residence. Now. That pudding consisted entirely of blueberries and other crushed berries, according to Mother Bear's testimony. And you might be wondering, where did Mother Bear get those berries? Well, the answer to that is simple. From the forest. Now, since the forest is home to everyone, anyone can take anything that they find in the forest because the forest does not belong to just one person. That means when our client Miss Goldilocks was eating that pudding. She was eating berries and other crushed berries that she could have found in that forest. So that means the bears had berries in possession that never technically belonged to just them, as they also belonged to our client, Miss Goldilocks. So she had every right to eat that pudding. So in order to convict her of larceny for the pudding, would be unjust, which means you can rule out obtaining, depriving, or appropriating that pudding. Next is the chair, the chair of Little Bear. When our client entered and left the residence of the Bears, she never brought the chair out of the residence, which means it remained in the house the entire time, so we can rule out obtaining. Because for in order to obtain the chair, she needs to have brought it to a transfer or purported it in the transfer, which he did not do. In order to have deprived Little Bear of his chair, she would have needed to have withhold it from him or withhold it permanently or for an extended period of time or under such circumstances to have made it lose its or used it for its major portion of its economic value or benefit or to have disposed of the property in such manner under such circumstances that we claim it, it as unlikely to be found and recovered by Little Bear. Now, since she did not withhold the property or dispose of it, we can rule out depriving of it. When it comes to appropriating it from her or a third person, she would have needed to exercise control over it or aid a third person to exercise control over it, or under such circumstances to acquire its the major portion of its economic value or benefit, or have disposed of it herself or aided the third person to dispose of it. In this case, the chair never left the residence. She never disposed of it. However, she did make a brief time period where she did use that chair. But the time period was so brief, and during that time it broke, which means she absolutely did not use it during the major portion of its economic value. So we can rule that out as well. She also did not dispose of it, as she just left it in the house. Finally is the bed. Now the bed was never obtained because it was never 
um, brought about in a transfer, so we can rule that out. She never withheld it or tried to dispose of the bed, so we can rule out depriving it. And when it comes to appropriating the property, she never once tried to dispose of it, but she did make use of the bed for a brief time period. However, that time period was so brief that the major portion of its economic value was not acquired during that time. So we can rule that out as well. Therefore, when it comes to our client, Miss Goldilocks, she never took anything that did not belong to her in the residence, as the pudding belonged to her as well. And she made use of the bed and the chair for a brief time period, but she never obtained, deprived, or appropriated that property. So now that the alleged uh, larceny has been cleared, I'll pass the floor to my colleague, Kieran. I'm here to tell you that our client is not guilty of criminal mischief, and punishing her on these counts would be completely unjust. For those of you that don't know, criminal mischief is defined as intentionally or recklessly damaging the property of another in an amount exceeding $50. Gold did not intentionally damage any of the bear's property, and when she left the home, it was in a very similar state as to when she entered it. As the prosecution has stated, Gold did consume some of the bear's pudding while in their home. But I'd like to ask the jury, who doesn't help themselves to a snack when visiting a friend's house? I know it's something I do all the time and I've never been charged with criminal mischief for it. I'd also like to call attention to the fact that Gold is just a little girl and it's highly unlikely that she was capable of eating $50 worth of pudding in one sitting. The only other object affected by Gold's presence was a small chair. Now finding Gold guilty of criminal mischief would imply that she deliberately smashed this chair into a million pieces until it was completely irreparable. The reality of the situation is Gold was simply trying to take a seat and the chair was unable to bear her weight. Only one leg of the chair was broken and it can easily be fixed. Finding Gold guilty of criminal mischief for helping herself to a snack at a friend's house and for accidentally breaking a chair when trying to take a seat would just be giving a little girl serious body image issues. She did not intentionally damage $50 worth of property at the Bears residence and is therefore not guilty of the accusations of criminal mischief. And now I would like to pass the floor to my colleague Isabel to discuss with you the charges of burglary. Our client cannot be tried on severe counts of burglary as the minimum required crime elements are not met. I will state for the jury that these elements are a person knowingly enters or remains unlawfully, a building, and an intent to commit crime therein. The prosecution may have their own interpretation of these events, but I will clarify these accounts for you to assure you that Gold is just a child who is looking for her friend Baby Bear to play with. First and foremost, Gold arrives looking for her friend Baby Bear. Baby Bear had invited Gold over on many occasions and she was taking him up on his offer. She arrives at the door and knocks clearly announcing her presence, not attempting to conceal her presence from those outside or those she believes to be inside. Believing that people are inside, Gold enters, and she enters with the assumption that she has the privilege to do so, as she is Baby Bear's friend. Since Gold has an intent to play with her friend, this criminal intent the prosecution advocates for is over-exaggerated. She enters thinking to herself, perhaps I should go See what toys Baby Bear has to play with. Maybe he has toys I don't have yet. This statement advocates the fact that Baby Bear has no intention to steal any of Baby Bear's possessions. She can easily go to her parents and request that they get her whatever toys that she likes. There is no point to steal toys that she would have in the near future. There is no crime against window shopping. A child in search of her friend is hardly any reason to charge Gold. The prosecution may demand severe charges for Gold's entering separately secured rooms, but the defense negates this. The building itself is a dwelling, and as defined here, a dwelling is a structure that is used by persons for overnight lodging. And while each bed is claimed by a different family member, 
None of those beds are separately secured. Gold states that she walks upstairs and is immediately able to discern which bed belongs to Baby Bear. If the beds were separately secured in different rooms, she would have not been able to immediately tell which one belonged to Baby Bear. So the prosecution may state that Gold never had the privilege to be in the household because she runs as soon as the bears arrive. However, she is a child and she was taking a nap and as she awakes, she sees bears looming over her. Any child would be disturbed by that sight, seeing as Baby Bear is the only bear who can be described as a teddy bear. Furthermore, Baby Bear confirms her privilege to be in the household as he asks her to stay. For all these reasons, the case seems to be only a misunderstanding between the plaintiffs and the defendant. To conclude this trial, the defense would like to say that Gold should not be condemned for these alleged charges. She is a child and should be tried as such. She is not on the level as criminals who have been punished for serious and heinous crimes. In reference to criminal tampering, Gold had no intent to sabotage or damage any of the bear's property as Ariel details in her section. Stephen explains that there is also no intent to steal or deprive any of these items from the bears, nor is any of the majority of their economic value depreciated. The interaction between these items does not constitute criminal mischief as Kieran discusses. Gold enters and helps herself to a snack, as would any guest in a household, and only accidentally breaks a chair that belongs to Baby Bear. Neither of these items is in excess of $50. From the beginning, we see that there is no criminal intent on Gold's part. She enters with the intention to play with her friend, and she does not break into separate spaces in order to attain any valuables. As per the invitation of Baby Bear, when the bears arrive, it is clear that Gold does have the privilege to be inside the household. I would like to repeat that these actions stem from a place that is somewhat misguided, but they are not at all criminal. The charges, as listed, criminal tampering, uh, larceny, criminal mischief, and burglary are not justified.